Okay, cool. So, um, welcome to, to, to this demo. This is uh, what you're seeing on screen is Gemini. Uh, how many of you have heard of Gemini? Excellent. Our marketing are doing their job. And um, Gemini is uh, really is a new product which is coming out next year. It's analysis services, but it's analysis services working in a really unique way. We've built um, an add-in for Excel, which is what you're seeing here, which is analysis services running with an in-memory um, engine as an add-in in, in the Excel environment, which means you can do some really interesting things in Excel, and you can do them on a laptop. And that's actually one of the, one of the most important things. Now, what I have here is a database, a little data warehouse, which I've imported to the, um, to the laptop. And what I'm working with here is some movie data. And it's actually movies from a download a movie download company like Netflix or Xbox Live. I wonder which one I'm using. I wonder where I'd have got the data. Um, mm. Yeah. So what I've got here is, well, this is some, some data from the box office, and I've got it ordered by rank. Okay. So you can see here the, the kind of box office movies I've got. These are the, the lowest ranking movies of all time on my list, which includes um, Mongolian Ping Pong, Looking for Cheyenne. Um, has anybody seen any of these? I'm no, surprised, nobody's surprised, admitting to uh, us. I'm okay. surprised uh, Chainsaw, uh, Chainsaw Cheerleaders is Chainsaw it? Cheerleaders is probably up there, like number 12 or something. Right. Um, so let's say I decided to sort this by, um, to sort it the other way around. What would be the top grossing movie of all time for a laptop bag? I heard Star Wars. I heard Titanic. Or I got a Forrest Gun. So Titanic, who said Star Wars? Spider-Man. Who's the boss? Okay. <laughs> I'll sort it. Hang on, let's sort it for by rank. Not that by that way. Let's sort it by rank. And smallest to largest, which will give me the uh, smallest rank for a laptop bag. So I'm keeping the laptop bag. Um, <laughs> I, I heard of Batman. He didn't, he didn't actually qualify which Batman because this, the franchise has five. I need a laptop bag. Come on. All right. I've only got like 30. No, okay. Who wants it? Who, who said Batman? Hey, over there. Okay. Gentlemen over here. All right. Apparently, you, you got a lot of uh, swag that you need to take home. There yeah, exactly. Go. All I'm really trying to do there is, 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 is give away a laptop bag. So there we, can, there we do. I'm sorting it. I'm doing some kind of some sorting on this data. This isn't a particularly interesting table, though. Um, if I go over to something like the media table, now you can see I've got dates. I've got like a time dimension in here which is going to show up. I've got a media dimension. The media dimension is actually pretty interesting because we've got things like categories and stuff like that that we need to look at for the rest of this. So let's have a look at like, oops, hang on a sec. I'm not going to use to this mouse. Let's have a look at genre and category. Well, why are you doing this? Oh, I know why it's doing that. Okay. What's happening here is when I press control in order to do zoom it, it actually took me back to the, uh, the last one I had selected. So I'm going to bl blame Ling Langat here for telling me to use zoom it. Um, so, here, so here's the genre. I've got drama. I've got category here. Let's do that. And I can then show you things like other genres, like um, what would be a good one. Let me filter it out and show you sci-fi and fantasy. And so sci-fi and fantasy has got things like science fiction movies there. And there's science, fa there's science fantasy and there's science fiction. So I've got all these different categories and I've got all these different genres. So what I'd like to do is do some analysis of all the movie sales and so on by, by genre and category. So what I'm going to do is also look at where people are buying these. So I have a purchases table. And the purchases table is actually quite cool. If I just show you about the data I've got in the purchases table, the interesting thing here is look how much data I've got. I've got 20 million rows of data. On, on the laptop, 20 million rows of data imported from this data warehouse running on the laptop in memory. So what kind of laptop do I need for this? There's a laptop. All right. So what I can do here is I can do some really, yeah, the big silver thing. Can you see it? You know, I'm, just, I'm asking. You know. So it's not just the fact that I've got a lot of data here. I've got a ton of data here. I've got 20 million rows. I can also work with it very interactively. So I can do things that filter. So let's filter out here and say I only want to see British pounds and filter that. And I see British pounds. Now see how quick that was? That's 20 million rows of data filtered basically instantly. And then let me do something like remove the filter and go back here and say sort by price. Let's do this. Let's see which are the most expensive ones. Where's price gone? 
Well, there's points price. Let's sort by that. And I'll do largest to smallest. How long is it going to take to sort 20 million rows on a laptop? Anybody from SSIS can tell me. <laughs> well, yeah, it took me less time than it took me to ask the question. Just instantaneous sorting. Let's try it again. Smallest to largest. Come on. 20 million rows sorted in a laptop in memory, effectively instantaneously. So you get the idea of the kind of interactivity and the kind of performance and, and power of this. So um, let's go back then and do some other things, and let's start to do some of that analysis that I'd like to do there. So what I'm going to do is um, go back to the Media tab and show you something that's actually quite interesting. This is not just about having all these different tables and having all this, this power and flexibility. It's actually also about some of the things you can do in terms of building a model. Now, Excel users don't think in terms of building a model. They just do lookups. They just have separate tables. They just build pivots. But as business intelligence users, we think about the model that's behind it. But actually, this isn't just an Excel-like environment. It's actually, you can actually use it in a kind of modeling way as well. So what I can do here is just show you some of the relationships that we've got. And you can see here that there's a relationship between the purchases table and the media table. So I can have media and purchases sort of joined together. And we actually have um, an expression language. And if I just tap through here, and I'm going to find a little pre-built expression and copy that and paste it into the, uh, the media table. Let me just hit up here. Go to the last column, add a new column here. And what I'm going to do is paste that and just show you what I'm doing here. Here's the new expression. What I'm saying is sum x um, of the related table, um, which is the purchases table. And for, so what I'm going to do here is for every row in the media table, which is about 7,000 rows, 7,270 rows, I'm going to go through every single one of those rows, the 20,227,000 um, rows in the purchases table, and I'm going to sum that. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go in and 7,000 times I'm going to calculate the sum of 20 million rows and put that into a new calculated column. And that will give me the total purchases for every movie that I've got. How long is that going to take? Let's, let's watch Spinny as it's doing it. If it takes two days, you may want to kind of book a hotel or something overnight. So while I'm doing this, let's think about what, what's actually happening here. This is actually going to do 7,000 times 20 million calculations. It's going to do 147,388,130, sorry, 147,388,134,170. That's a lot. Calculations. And it's done it on a laptop against these 20 million rows of data. It's kind of impressive, isn't it?